typical human skeleton is made up of 206 bones, acting as support for the body, protection for the organs, and allowing for ease of movement. We give little thought to this complex mechanical system, that is, until something goes wrong. For all of us, bone injuries are extremely painful and can have a long-lasting effect. For elite athletes, however, it can devastate careers. It's hard to imagine a more contact, traumatic sport at present than rugby. These guys play with no protection, get involved in head-on collision, and I shudder as I see them shudder being hit in the middle of the field. We were uh, playing Italy in the Six Nations and you know, lucky enough one of those players got to play in Crow Park and then just a badly timed tackle hit the point of uh, someone's elbow and my arm just shattered in eight places and my wrist in two places. The general kind of time frame is about six to eight weeks from a broken arm. Fortunately mine involved non-union and three operations over a 12 month period. I have a plate now running from just below my wrist up to just below my elbow and about 20 screws in there and you can my wife gets a great kick out of uh, rubbing over them as you can feel them on the top of the skin you're kind of helpless there's only so much training you can do and you know you have a, a hole in your arm and you can't train you can't play so you're kind of in limbo and that's probably the worst place to be as a, as a rugby player the most typical bone injuries are simple fractures which once reset will heal themselves without complications However, this is not the case with non-union fractures, whereby the bones fail to heal after treatment. Treating these is difficult and typically involves reconstruction using bone grafts taken from somewhere else in the body. However, a team at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, led by Fergal O'Brien, have come up with an amazing solution to a range of bone problems. Although at first it might not look like much, this is a pretty phenomenal breakthrough. So this is our big oven, and this is 10 years of engineering in the making, multi-million euro interdisciplinary research, and... So this is it, Jonathan, yeah. <laughs> this, this, is, this is it. So a cross between polystyrene and cotton wool, as somebody once described it as to me. It's, it, it doesn't look like much. So no, what, what it is? doesn't, it doesn't. So simply what it is, is a bioactive scaffold which recruits the body's own cells and tells them to become bone-forming cells and heal bone defects. The new material contains both collagen and hydroxyapatite, which are already found in human bone. So when it's applied, it doesn't provoke an inflammatory response. Basically, the body doesn't try to reject it. This can be used very successfully in non-union fractures, but also in the case of other diseases. You might have a case where you've got an osteosarcoma, which is a tumour of the bone, and typically what happens there is a surgeon comes in, they remove the tumour, but that leaves behind a hole or a void, and in that particular application, the scaffold will be used to try and plug that hole and help to regenerate it and bring it back to normal load-bearing capacity. So when the process is complete, that piece of material has regenerated the bone, has actually caused the bone to come back to life, so to speak. Is that right? That's it, exactly. That's amazing. Have we seen this in action? Have we seen this working? We work very closely with the veterinary school in UCD, but recently they came to us with a very interesting case whereby a mare might have to be put down. So they came to us looking for a potential solution. We discovered that she had a very big jaw, so the jaw was enlarged from here to here. And it took us a while to understand what was going on, but we realized it was a cyst inside the jaw, an expanding cyst. We opened the jaw, remove all the cystic material and to enhance the bone healing, the bone was extremely thin, we applied Fergal O'Brien's uh, mm. scaffold inside. The surgery went well, she recovered well. There is still, you can see a little lump of bone at this level, but the, the jaw itself has decreased in size. She's back to where she was supposed to go. She's racing, she seems to be happy, so I'm delighted by the outcome. This is an exciting case that I can present to my colleagues at the European or the American level to show, okay, how great was this tool to help the, the bone healing. I'm always in favor of using new things like that that can improve the, the surgical outcome. We've seen how well this treatment has worked for Anna Haven. The next step is clinical trials to see how well it works in human beings. It's hoped that this bone graft substitute will be in clinical trials in humans within the next 12 to 18 months through Spinac company Surgical Technologies. 
There is a price for playing this game and you know, you'd be very silly to think you're going to play for any length of time and not have some sort of injuries that are going to stay with you for the rest of your life. So to have something that they could have popped into my arm on the first surgery and it would have skipped the next eight months uh, of kind of, you know, torture and not really knowing which way your life was going. It would be great to have something like that that they just pop in and then dissolves into your, into your body and you get a nice healthy bone. It's not just people with bone injuries who will benefit. Fergal and his team have already started developing the next generation of this treatment, utilising it for cartilage repair, which has the potential to transform orthopaedic medicine, particularly benefiting the 900,000 people living with arthritis here in Ireland. Cartilage presents a completely different challenge. There aren't many cells around here in order to regenerate the tissue. So our approach has been to recruit stem cells from the person's own bone marrow and then to use our materials to instruct those stem cells to form cartilage on the surface of the joint and bone beneath it. Kappa Hospital is our national orthopaedic centre and Professor John O'Byrne is one of Ireland's leading professors in orthopaedics. What we do from day to day is use artificial materials. So for example, if you look at these x-rays, this here is a pretty normal, with a nice bone, and the little space between the two bones, that's the cartilage which we like to preserve. This here is an example of hip resurfacing. So you can see there's a small amount of artificial material that has been used in the hip joint. And then as this fails, you can end up with a situation like this, where I think you can readily appreciate that there's a huge amount of artificial material and the bone has been damaged uh, as the material fails and as it loosens. So what we're trying to do with the biological research is to treat it so that we persevere with the patient's own bone and the patient's cartilage. And I think with this type of innovation and treatment, the young people today who develop arthritis, they will not end up with something like this. We're really excited about this technology and really feel that this approach to cartilage regeneration is at the forefront of orthopaedic medicine worldwide and it has the potential to benefit thousands and millions of patients internationally. This is great news for Ireland, isn't it? Yeah, and already we're creating jobs with these technologies because the products are being made here in Ireland. So what started off with taxpayers' money through Science Foundation Ireland and Enterprise Ireland being used to fund the development and the science behind the technologies is now leading to job creation here in Ireland.